Welcome to One Touch Ministries, uh, second our home gathering, uh, where our uh, episodic overseers is uh, Pastor Shannon and Prophetess Nadija Young, and our campus minister here is myself, uh, Minister Henry Jackson. And so let's go to the uh, reading of the scripture. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, with uh, Sister Barbara Jackson. I'm going to Philippians 4, 4 through 7. Rejoice in the Lord always, and then I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, by thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your heart and mind from Christ Jesus. Father, brother, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, and whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are loving, whatsoever things are in good report, if there be any virgin, and if there be any praise, thanks on these things. These things which ye have about learn and receive and hear and see in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly, and now at the last your care for me has flourished again. But then ye we also and we also careful, but ye like occupation. Now that I speak of this respect of what, what I have learned in whatsoever things I am, there will be content. Yeah, so we would just like to go into prayer this evening. People with so do you want to come to say thank you. Thank you for your grace and your mercy, Lord. Father God, I just thank you for allowing me to see another day. Father God, that you have created, Lord. Father God, you said to ask and it shall be given in your name, Lord. Father God, on the 28th 
I'm asking you to come and go with me, Lord. Heal my anatomy, Lord. Bless the doctors going to do the procedure, Lord. Bless my sister. Bless my mother. Bless my family, Lord, in the mighty way, Lord. Father God, you said no weapon shall form the gifts us shall prosper. You said that you would give us life so that we can have it more abundantly, Lord. I just thank you for your grace and your wonderful mercy. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I just like to uh, give a prayer out to my uh, mom. Mm -hmm. Worship. Yeah, so you got a song that you wanted to to sing? Testimonial. Um, yeah, I just want to say I, I I would like to thank the Lord. I thank the Lord for for blessing me throughout this week and for uh, keeping me, you know, in my well, waking me up this morning for putting me in my right mind for uh, for blessing me with the opportunity to breathe uh, breath this morning so I can do what I need to do. Um, also, thank the Lord for. I, I, I want to say for blessing my auntie uh, for her going through her uh, tough time and for for the Lord allowing her to get through her tough time. So I thank the Lord for her. Um, also thank the Lord for my mother, my grandmother, my, uh, my Uncle Big, my Uncle Joe, uh, my Uncle Johnny, and uh, every other person that's on my family list. I thank the Lord for all of them for, for the Lord. You know, putting a smile on y'all faces and for providing for y'all in the time of y'all needs. Yeah, I just want to say thank the Lord for blessing us daily. 
Thank the Lord for keeping us in his keeping power. Thank the Lord for blessing us to able to continue his will. Do for those who are not able to do for themselves. I thank the Lord for blessing us to be able to help someone along the way. Every time I get something that I don't need, I always take, give it out to someone that who are in need for it. Lord, they want to say thank you. And we want to pray to keep the Lord to give <coughs> Teresa and her family in prayer for the loss of her mother. Mm -hmm. We thank you that they have a safe journey here, Lord, and take care of what they have to take care of. And bless them to have a safe journey back home. In Jesus' name we pray, Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, I just thank God for another day's journey, Lord. I just thank mm -hmm. God for opening up my eyes to give me the opportunity to, to go to church this morning, to give him praise, give him honor, give him glory. I just thank God that he's Alpha, the Maker, the beginning and the end. Mm -hmm. I just thank God for being so good to us. You know, he didn't have to do it, but he did it anyhow. You know, someone laid down last night and didn't wake up this morning. But I just want to say thank you. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Look upon the, look upon Doris and Teresa and the rest of the family as they go through their time of bereavement. Touch them. They hearts are, I know their hearts are heavy, but just give them thanks and let them know that they can lean and depend on you. I just want to say thank you. All right, so we're going to uh, go into our uh, testimonial. I mean, I'm sorry, our, our sermon, part of the service. So in the book of Matthew 27, verses 11 through 29, reads, and, and I'm reading from the voice translation, and it says, it reads here that Jesus was standing before the governor, Pilate. So Pilate responded, Pilate Asked Jesus a question, asking that, are you the, the king of the Jews? Jesus responded, so you say. Said the chief priest and the elders stood and poured out their accusations that Jesus was a traitor, that he was a, a sexist a rebel, a crazy, and a would-be savior, and a would-be king. Jesus stood in the stream of accusations, but he did not respond. Verse 13, Pilate asked Jesus a question. Well, he, he asked the crowd, the, the crowd a question, stating that, do you hear, when he's talking to Jesus, that do you hear these accusations they are making against you? Uh, still, Jesus says nothing, which Pilate found rather astounding. Uh, no process, no defense, no nothing. Verse 15 reads that now the governor had a custom during the great Jewish festival of Passover, he would allow the crowd to pick one of the con condemned men, and he, Pilate, would set the man free. Just like that, uh, gra 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 gratuitous, gracious, gratis freedom. At, at this time, they had a notorious prisoner named Barnabas it says so when the crowd gathered Pilate offered them a choice Pilate responds to the crowd asking that whom do you want me to free Barnabas or Jesus some whom some called the anointed one so Pilate knew that the chief priests and elders hated Jesus and had delivered him up because they envied him Verse 19, they then Pilate sat down on his judgment seat and he received the message from his wife. And she came in the room saying to, to her husband, saying, uh, distant yourself uh, utterly from, from, from the proceeding against this righteous man. I have had a dream about him and a dream full of twisted sufferings, for he is innocent. I know it, and we should have nothing to do with him. Verse 20 reads, But the chief priests and the elders convinced the crowd to demand that Barnabas, not Jesus, whom some call the anointed one, be freed, and that Jesus be put to death. And so as Pilate stands before the crowd, he asks, Which of these men would you have me to set free? 
and everyone shouting out Barnabas. So uh, Pilate asked a question again, asked that, so what would you have me to do with this Jesus, who some called the anointed one? And the crowd shouted out, crucify him. So Pilate asked why, what crime has this man committed? And the crowd responded again, crucify him. Verse 24 reads, Pilate saw that unless he wanted a riot on his hands, he now had to bow to their wishes. So he took a pitcher of water, stood before the crowd, and washed his hands. Which, in other words, he, he took the vice of his wife. And so, so you see this. So he said that you will see to this crucifixion. For this man's blood will be upon you and not upon me. For I wash myself of it. So the crowd responded back, indeed, let his blood be upon us, be upon us and our children. So Pilate released Barnabas, and he had Jesus flogged and handed over to be crucified. Verse 27 reads that the governor's soldiers took Jesus into a great hall, uh, a gathering, a great crowd, and stripped Jesus of his clothes, draping him of a bow, scarlet cloak. We, we, which means a, a robe. So, so that kind, so that the kind that soldiers sometimes wore, and they gathered some thorny vines. They roved or they drove them into a crown. They made a crown out of it, and they pierced the crown upon his head. And they stuck a reed, or in other words, a staff or a scepter in his right hand. And then they knew before him, this inside and upside down king, they marked him with cattail, saying, Hail, the, the king of Jews. Um, so so what, we, uh, what I had preached on last Sunday was about Jesus standing in front of the, the trial of him uh being convicted of some things that he have spoken of some things that he have prophesied it that was going to happen and so uh as he was doing this as as we know they they was taking him in the sense of uh, of they was thinking he was uh uh trying to claim himself as god and so that's why they bought him before uh i'll say pilate in the first place uh, so he's standing in front of Pilate, and as you notice, before he uh, didn't he, he he didn't answer none of the chief priest questions. And so uh, when Pilate stood in front of him, Pilate was asking him the question, was asking him question, and you notice know Jesus only responded to him by him saying, "Yes, that that it is so." So, um. As they was trying to figure out, well, Pilate was trying to figure out, basically, um, you know, yeah, what really had this man done? Because could you bring him to me? And according to what my government laws is, you no, know, he didn't do anything wrong. And so due to the fact that a Jewish, uh, I want to say Jewish, uh, their land was under a Roman uh, I want to say under a uh, Roman uh, rulership, so it basically fell in in his hands. But however, they was divided into segments. Of course, we didn't read it in this scripture, but uh, Pilate found out that Jesus was a uh, was a, a good what's the word good uh, good and so he was for to be trial not under him but under a man who was uh appointed to to handle those convictions so they sent them to him and he sent them back um but but at this point in time uh Jesus was standing there and they so he knew he had to uh stand in front of the crowd and ask them cuz normally this was a part of his tradition or Part of their traditions let a prisoner go. And then, so he asked the crowd, who did they want him to let go? And they all yelled out Barnabas. 
And so he was asking, well, they know what they hire Barnabas for because he's on trial because uh, they know what he did. He he actually murdered some people. But Jesus standing there and he's innocent and probably trying to figure out why did they, you know, put this man on trial. And so as his wife said to him, uh, uh, running in the room, saying to him, you know, that this man that the Holy Spirit gave her a dream. Telling her that this man is innocent. And, and she was telling him, you know, don't we don't allow this man's blood to be upon your hands. And so uh, uh, she didn't want to be blamed for for this innocent man's life. And so as Pilate stands before the crowd and uh, due to the pressure of the crowd, as a, the scripture said that the high priest had hyped up the crowd. To want them to say crucify him because, uh, yeah, the the high priest felt Jesus was getting in the way uh, of their Passover. So their Passover was supposed to be that Saturday, I believe, and they 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 did this. Uh, I want to say Thursday or Friday, so the day before, and so so they want to make sure that he was out the way, and so as they said crucify him it is one thing I want you to take notice here is when they said to him to crucify him Pilate watched his hand to you know to take advice from his wife by saying well if if you want to crucify him then you would do it you know because uh, you want to do it and I'm, I'm going to be left alone out of this situation and so as Pilate stepped back the Romans Soldiers stepped forward and they began to uh, uh, take him. What we see in the in a hall, and they, as you read in scripture, that they stripped off his clothes and they put him in a in a in a robe, in a kingly robe. And so, in, in inside of my notes here, yeah, I wrote down here that that the robe that they put him in was referred uh, as, as what your Bible may read as a scarlet. But that that's uh well actually he was in a purple robe that they put him in. And so what the robe uh symbolizes well they, they the robe and it said the the crown that they put on his head and the scepter or the staff that they put in his hand, uh inside his right hand, and they yelled something at him, which he said, Hell, and they kneeled to him saying, Hell the king of the Jews. But the robe, I, I want you to know that the robe symbolizes something, and it symbolizes that uh, a covering or a or an indication of your position. So, it, but it also means a protection as a covering. So, so for anyone who who's in, in need of protection, or or who's in need of a covering, or who's in need of a uh, that the Lord has put you in position. Uh, the the crown that they made that was made of thorns that was put upon his head that symbolizes it that the Lord has been given a position, or in other words, He has given us a position of favor and of honor. Said so the have, I'm sorry, to have. To run, so you, so what the Lord is saying, He's giving you the authority from the crown to be able to uh, run this race that you're in. Um, and last but not, well, I want to say the the staff or the rod that they put in His right hand is a symbolization of a, a position of authority. And the word that they yelled out at Him when they be before they kneeled to Him was. Hell, the king of the Jews. The word hell uh, symbolizes as that that's God's way of saying to you that, that I am fighting on your behalf. And so anyway, uh, so it, it doesn't matter what, what, what pressure that you may be under uh, this week or uh, previously that you're going to go into, but the Lord want me to tell you that that uh, that he is fighting for you, that he has already made the battle, has already been won, and he's going to walk you through it. And so, so I, I, I do want you to 
stand that 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 when Pilate's wife uh received the vision that 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 was Jesus' confirmation that he was in the right place, and so uh, as Jesus was going through these markings which has been prophesied upon his life, uh Jesus was standing in the right place, and so you may be in the season now where you may feel like you know um. I would say uh, everyone is turning against you, or everyone is, you know, not not now they wanting to not not see you make it. They not wanting, but to see you successful. They not wanting, uh uh. Or you may feel like like you at a dead end. But but I I, I just want you to understand that the Lord want me to tell you that that pilot wife gave you your confirmation and let you know that that you are innocent. You are going to make it you are going to be victorious and more importantly you know as Pilate sends him off and what what the soldier was doing the soldier was stripping him from his 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 where he was and they put on him a robe to get him prepared to where he's about to go and so what i want to explain to you is is that i don't know what season that you're in or i don't know what Season where you're going into, but but I want to explain to you that the Lord want me to tell you that that He's taken off from you what you used to have or the, the the things that you're going through, those battles that you're facing. The Lord has stripped them off of you. He's put on you His robe. He's put on you His crown. He put on you. He's put in your hand His staff. So the robe that the Lord put on your back is, I say, is a covering of a position so that is a sign of that you're being protected by him the crown that he put on your head is a sign of he's giving you honor and favor so in other words that you're going to have the endurance the 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 ability to be able to run this race so whatever it is that you're facing thirdly the staff that he puts in your hand that symbolizes that you have authority to be where you're where you are at. So, and what that basically means is whatever you're, wh wh whatever that's happening now, because you have authority to be where you are, uh, that place isn't going to crush you. So, you know, in some instances, when people be in certain situations where they don't supposed to be, that those situations can end up crushing you or can end up ruining them or could do uh, damage to them. But the Lord said that I've had you in this season because I've authorized you to be there, which means I put you there. It, 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 it is a reason why you're there. Fourthly, the soldiers, the ones who stripped him, the ones who put on him the, the, the new uh, uh, his newness where he's going, the, the ones who stripped him, they, 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 they yelled out a specific word, which was hell. And the Lord want me to tell you the word that your enemies yelled out to you is a representation of me letting you know that I am fighting on your behalf. So regardless of what they say, or regardless of what bad news you get, or regardless of what you're facing or where you're going to go, the Lord said, I'm, 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 Put my words in your enemy's mouth to let you know that you are going, that I'm fighting on your behalf. So where you're going, the, the battle has already been won. Now I would like to read to you these seven fold blessings. Number one uh, speaks here, it says, I speak blessings of health for you and your family. Sevenfold blessings too said, I speak blessings of deliverance from any habits that you have in your life. Number three, I speak blessings of peace to your mind from anybody or anything that may be disturbing you. Number four, I speak blessings of salvation to any friends or loved ones. Number five, I speak comfort. I speak blessings of comfort. To any person hurting, that's lonely, that's bereaving, 
or confused. Verse number uh, number six. I speak blessings of finances, debt, debt cancellations, prosperity, economic empowerment to all of God's people according to His riches and glory. And number seven, I speak blessings of anointings and promotion in your life to complete your assignment to move forward in your purpose. Yeah, I, I would like to do the benediction uh, so we can uh, close out. So you will find this in Numbers 6, chapter 6, verse 24 through 26, which reads, uh, May God bless you. May God keep you. May God smile on you. May God gift you. May God look you full in the face and make you prosper.